get cracking. Welcome back, everybody, here to your coverage of the D2CL Grand Final Game Number 4 of Navi going up against Cloud9 here in our big Best of 5 Grand Final. We are, of course, two games to one as we go into Game Number 4. Navi do carry the advantage into this game, but so far we've had one game go one way, one game the other, one game the other way, and now let's see if we actually finish the circle of life and move faster does appear and go 2-2. Two, two. Or will Scar actually triumph at the end of the day? Let's Let's find out together! Into the draft we go, and I can welcome in my co-commentator. He's more hilarious than the hyenas from Lion King. Welcome to the broadcast, Cinderin. Yay, I got compared to a uh, hyenas. Hey, those guys were like the best characters <laughs> in that movie. Great. Ed I was guess. amazing. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to find something to shoot back at you, but I've got nothing. So uh, no, not no, no, no shots fired, Sorry. Cinderin? I'm not hilarious. I just proved it. So I, I'm not I, 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 maybe you've lost your humor in your old age. It's... Did I just say a hyenas? Okay, there we go. Let's move on. Cool. Um, do you know what that. happened? Look what happened. I, I, I don't believe what happened. Um, we did not get a Naga ban. <laughs> Woo! For, for the first time ever. But instead, Batrider finally in the band pool. What a surprise, Cinderin. What a surprise. Yeah, he's won all the games today, right? All mm -hmm. three had Batrider on the winning team, I yep. think. And so. even, even in the last game, Batrider proved just how awesome he was as Dandy last to Creep. I don't know if you were following his Twitter, but during <laughs> yeah, the break, he basically like, Hey, <laughs> Creep! <laughs> and that was basically it. Yeah. Well, well, they could afford to, to make a couple of misplays in that game. I, I reckon if Dandy kept, kept tweeting those kind of stuff out during the international, he could break Twitter just like Ellen DeGeneres. Maybe. That would be a little bit of a shocker. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? <laughs> Hey, Den Denny's still got 100 almost 150k followers on his Twitter. Anything is yeah. possible. Yeah, did you hear he's got more than the Ukrainian football team? <laughs> yeah, I, I heard that. I watched this wonderful you documentary that? That, that showed me oh, that. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, some people f found out about it. Um, oh, look, we've got AA picked. <laughs> it's, uh, but that, Marana, yeah, actually. Mar Marana's a little bit more... Um, out of our norm, because normally, like you're looking for the combination here, is and I got a funny feeling the puppy is semi picking this to block the Cloud Nine combo, but at the same time, Cloud Nine can do so many different combos with this lineup. Like this could be Naga into Black Hole. We could see Bone Seven's Dark Seer appear in this lineup. You could have Sing Sing back on that Alchemist again with like like Naga Sleep into something else. You could Disruptor, who's also another hero, which Cloud Nine like, like, like to combo with the Naga Siren. There's just so many heroes. I don't think block pick really is the what they're searching for in this. And with a CM coming into the mix-up... Oh, and Naga Sleep into Freezing Field. <laughs> could Great you... synergy. <laughs> yeah, I, I... I don't mind that hmm. synergy. I like that synergy. So the one thing like... I can't help but think about when I see this is Navi giving away Naga. This is kind of giving me flashbacks to TI2, if you remember. You definitely remember. <laughs> Um, I, where Naga was like I, the first pick in every single game and teams just started banning it in all the games and then Navi gave it away willingly. I, th I think we classed it as it. the no fun hero. Yeah, uh, and so what I'm thinking when Navi give this away instead of Batrider is either they have a strategy specifically on how they want to deal with this hero or they just think Batrider is worse to play against, which... <laughs> Batrider is definitely an annoying hero to play against, but a Naga Siren who has a good game is absolutely insane to play against. Um, we're gonna see if uh, if Cloud. I'm I'm assuming they play it as a carry or a core. That's that's done more than more than a support at this point. Um, yeah. If you go back a few months, it was exclusively played as a support. Now it's almost always played mid or carry. Um, I think we will probably see it played by Envy. Uh, so they might just play it safe lane, but can Sing also play that mid? I... I don't think I've seen that, have I? She Was he the one that did it? I, I don't think it was him that did it, but I know, uh... I, I, no, 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 yes, yes, I have, a, I have a game in my memory where he did do it. Uh, but they also combined it up with the Chem. That was the, the mid stacking that I was telling you about. Like, you just pull Naga off the middle lane, you go back and you, mm -hmm. and you rip tide and you farm up with one Chem creep to tank up the most of the damage. Uh, so yeah, that's the combination which you could use, but C9's on the dire side for this game. So that makes it a lot harder, because it's a lot more time, you've got you to walk a long way out of the lane in order to get that high level of farm. So it's not as effective when you're on the dire side. I, I'm with you on this one saying Eternal Envy should be on the Naga Siren. 
Um, just let Pilot Eye take his Crystal Maiden and get something either like a Chen or I'd almost want to see a split push hero in this game uh, and pick up a Nature's Prophet. I know it, it could be really dangerous. Like, they take out the Rubik, they take out the Dazzle, because those are two heroes which could combine up nicely with the Ancient Apparition to make a lot of havoc for Bone 7 on that off lane. But if they just run a safe lane Naga, try and get him up into the radius as quickly as possible. Um, the other person is Harney, who did the Naga Siren with that, and that was uh, him being supported by Notel. Uh, yeah, but right now, I, I, I kind of like, I'm, I'm with you for the carry Naga. I think Navi's going to run an aggressive try lane against that then. Um, you, you need to have a setup here to do that. Like, you need, like, the SD or something like that to make that really work. Not necessarily. So, if you're playing... One thing that Naga has going for her as a melee carry is that she has high armor, which is... Okay, now I think it's less likely, unless that's mid, which it could be still for Dendi, but... Um, Naga's still a melee hero, and if you're playing a triple range lane with chilling touch against that, you can still easily deny her farm and, and pressure her along the lane. So, the... What Naga usually relies on in terms of playing as a carry on the lane is that she can commit into the fight because she knows she can tank up. There's pretty much no hero in the game that can tank up three ranged heroes with chilling touch in the early game. Um, so if Navi want to do that, they could do it. I am going to expect the Shadow Shaman to be a support because I think Navi rarely play at mid, but they could do it in this game. I think the approach that they have right now is we want a support now that can push towers because we don't want to end up in a situation where Cloud9 take over the map. If you're in that position against a carry Naga, you lose 95% of the time. And against a Naga and Tinker, you lose 100% of the time <laughs> if you lose the map control. That's just how it is. Ah, oh, that's a brutal combo. Especially for heroes like Ancient Apparition and Shadow Shaman, you want to get these guys on the front lines casting off at least like, like two Ether Shocks, some Hexes, and some Shackles, but Shadow Shaman can almost die instantly the second like March the Machines comes down, Rocket and Laser. You've, I, I, it's very difficult for Navi to stand the fight. Now on Marana, like Marana's these days have been going for the, uh, the, the friendly item for all pro players, it seems, is the Maelstrom very early on. So you get that early DPS, but you don't have protection because of that. They get the Maelstrom and then you get your BKB, but as we all know, March of the Machines is a special, special thing. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult to survive underneath the Master of the Machines, and I doubt Moran's going to go, hey, I'll buy a Blade Mail. I'm just probably not going to happen. No, I think, I think the good thing for Moran in this game, though, is that there's no lockdown yet on Cloud9's side. So the Murana will be able to play really aggressively. The only, knock, uh, the only lockdowns, if you will, that Cloud9 have are... Roots. They have Frostbite and they have Ensnare, and Mirana can leap in both of them, so... It's actually not a bad game to be a mobile hero in, which is why they will get Storm Spirit. <laughs> so, he's good for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, I just mentioned. Yep. Uh, reason number two, he's really good against Tinker. And it's... I think I've, I might have said this before in a cast with you, but in my book, there are just some heroes in this game that are absolutely insane when not countered. Uh, Storm Spirit is on the top of my list together with Ember. And who else could we put in that? Weaver. You know, if there's no stun or silence on the, en on the enemy team or something like that, you're absolutely crazy with these heroes because their mobility is off the, off the charts, they do great damage, and they scale well into the late game. All those three heroes have that in common. So I think Cloud9 now have to get a counter. So they're going to get the silence from Puck and Minus Stun from Dream Coil. I think they need more. But notice how this kind of like screws around with their lanes. Like, it should be Sing Sing's Tinker. It should be Bone 7's Puck, but this is going to be, what, an off-lane Puck? Yeah. That's, that's going to be leveling up way too slow to really do something about the Storm Spirit, and not to that's mention point. farming too slow, because the Blink Dagger timing on Puck is going to be delayed. Like, the only other way I, I see around this is putting Puck on the top lane and pushing the CM Naga to the bottom, but you really want to try and aggro try up against an Ancient Apparition buff up? Probably not. And you don't want to leave Puck up on that top lane up against a, a potential aggro tri lane too. I think C9 are going ha to have some real troubles with their laning in this game. Unless they can I force something. They, they might be able to just try and force something. But then again, they don't want to force something when they've got a Tinker. Like, this should just turn into like almost bringing a Doombringer into the jungle and just saying, you know, if Puck can get some farm and experience in the bottom lane, that's fine. We'll put the Doom in the jungle, let Naga farm out top lane, Crystal Maiden doing her little pulling kind of thing as well, um, and just try and pull as much out of the jungle as possible. 
for Cloud9. That's the only thing I can feel right now which would give them back the advantage which they've lost during this first part of the draft. And uh, oh, they say no to that. <laughs> they've been out the Doombringer themselves. I would agree with you. I think, you know, when you just look at Cloud9's lineup and how they usually play, they don't mind putting Bone7 on the puck offlane. That's perfectly fine. But exactly because of the role he needs to play against the Storm, it's, try. it's hard for them to put the puck offlane. Navi's just going to... Now, now it's kind of okay, because Puck can go against Spectre one-on-one. -on -one. It's not going to be one-on-one. -on -one. You, you don't think it's going to be? Like, no. You think it's going to be, what, dual lanes, or what's, what's your go here? Navi's seeing the flaw in Cloud9's lineup is that they can't challenge them. This, this almost doesn't matter what Cloud9 picks now, unless if they play the Naga as a support, which I actually think they should do now. Mm -hmm. uh, if they play Naga as a support, they can put the Tinker mid in the Puck safe lane so they solve their problem with countering the Storm, and then they can run an aggressive trial in with Naga support and a ranged carry, and then they can take the fight to Spectre. Because if they don't, they're going to end up in a situation here where Navi will slowly but steadily take control of the map, and they will find pickoffs everywhere. Cloud9 has strictly, they have exclusively fragile heroes that Storm Spirit can gank with a haunt and any follow-up. It's just a kill. And if the Puck is playing the offlane, then C9 has absolutely no counters to Storm. And that's like a, you know, that's a huge problem. <laughs> I don't know how many games I've seen won because a Storm was uncountered and just almost won the game by himself. Um, so C9 in my book needs a ranged carry that has a silence. I think they could try for the draw here, maybe. But I no, that's still too weak. I don't know. I think that's why they're digging the, into the, the, all the, the draw has also this screwed is up the second Spectre ultis. Like she'll lose so much of her power the second Spectre jumps Five in on yep. her. Um, and Gyro, well, that gives you aggro try. That gives aggro try for Range C9. Carry. They're not going to carry with the Naga. It yeah. wouldn't have worked, I think. So this is a good decision from C9, but I feel like Navi did a really good draft here in terms of not just the draft itself, which is good, but the way they played up against Cloud9's draft the whole way through was really, really intelligent here from Puppy, I think. So I'll give them an edge on that, but C9 has a great lineup. If they get a good laning stage, then Look by no the means heroes. is this not. I, I got a feeling there's a switch up here because I know someone was also tweeting me saying like that um, Cloud9 ran a very similar lineup with the Tinker. Um, Wait, it was Eternal what? Envy on the Tinker. But yeah, Pyline Dine Tinker, they could try and jungle this thing. No, this, this is just them trying to screw with Navi's brains. That's all this is. That's all this can be. Right? Sind? Right? It, you can jungle Tinker. It's totally possible. You can. I don't think it's going to work. But when you got a Crystal Maid, you don't really want to do it. Uh... And it still, it doesn't solve their problem. Here's the thing. No matter what they do, if Puck doesn't get a blink... I think Dendi's going to have the game of his life. There's no counter to the Storm Spirit. That's why generally I, I, would, I would advise teams, if, if they give away Storm Spirit like this and they have one or two picks left, make sure you get more than one counter. Or if you get a counter, it's a really good one. Puck is good, but only if he gets the blink. Else he's barely a counter to the Storm because he just jumps on other heroes and then the silence will never land. And... Unless Pi, he's still on the Tinker, by the way, so they might be considering this. Unless if he gets a Hex on that Tinker, like this... My prediction for this game is, if Bone7 goes offlane on Puck and they jungle the Tinker, if Na'Vi prevents the Tinker from getting an early Hex, they win the game. I know it's a really strict <laughs> conclusion to make already. Uh -huh. I'm just seeing trouble right now for Sinan. They've got good team fight, but they can't deal with the skirmishes that Na'Vi can just pull on them all over the map. And if they let Spectre free farm on top of that, no way. Yeah. I, I'm with you on all counts, man. I'm 100% with you on all counts. It's really... I, I think props have to go. I, I, I hate the term one on the draft, and I still don't think it is. But... Advantage on the draft. Advantage yeah. draft, yeah. Yeah, if you could do that. If like, we just call like at the end of this draft, like it's not deuce, it's actually advantage. Uh, yeah. yeah. I wonder how many people actually get that reference. But that's... That's not because C9 has a bad draft, because their draft, oh. the heroes, the composition makes a lot of sense. And in many it's, other games, I would say this is a great pick, it's but just maybe up against not against Navi's. One. Yeah, exactly. That's, I've, we're going to see. I, in last game, I thought Navi was going to have a hard game, and they completely rolled that. So maybe I'm just totally wrong today. Um, and C9 is going to stomp them this game, and then I'm just going to hide, and you can solo cast game five. Um, <laughs> we're not doing that, Sind. <laughs> we're not letting that happen. <laughs> Mm. But, yeah, I would... I feel like I've been pretty wrong today. It's been a tough day for me. Really? Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've, so, I've, kind of I've felt, been kind of wrong. I've felt pretty right about today. Uh, ever, since, ever since, like, 
winning. You the got the trivia Ephesus right. This is the trivia. I felt very like <laughs> up. Like like for nothing first... can pull you down from that throne. <laughs> but there was I there won was the trivia. There was there was something in during game number one where I thought ah uh, things just like no I don't I don't feel the magic in me and then the magic appears so I'm like sweet I'm feeling good today I'm feeling good today but C9 I I'm not taking my eyes off them man. I want to see if this is actually going to be a support tinker. And I know this happened recently too. There was a game I cast and I actually picked up items. I think it was actually it was EG that did it. It was EG that did it. And I was like, look at this going, there's no way. There's no way this hero is going to run this lane with this item. Um, and they switched when they hit their tier 3 towers and they're walking out. Now, Pylai Dai has picked up wards, tango, and one clarity. And he just gave one of the wards over to Bone 7. And there's no switch. They're staying on these heroes. Okay, now this actually could be next level. This could be really, really next level. You push Sing Sing to the off lane to find the farm down here. Now he'll have support from Aoi 2000, and Aoi can also rotate over to Pylite Die. Pylite Die, in the meantime, farms up the Radiant Jungle away from the heroes of Na'Vi. Now, Na'Vi's it coming up into the enemy jungle because they're like, wait, a Tinker's in here and it's being played pay, pay by, play by Pylite Die. So let's just ward up their jungle and they'll be able to do nothing. So if they commit sentry wards to do this or observer wards to do this, they actually waste their wards by doing such a thing. And yep, Kuro threw down an observer ward deep inside the jungle, but Pylite Die can do either their jungle or just do the ancients. So what happens if Pylite Die goes into the Radiant jungle is that Na'Vi will take one of their supports and then they will hunt him out. True. And then he just goes Ancients. Yeah, so he has to have the Ancients, but what if they're blocked? This is when it gets scary. Does Navi have... Navi has a sentry left on Puppy, so he can do that. Uh, he can block that for, for those four minutes, but... I don't know if they want to do that just He's, yet. I don't think they want to take Puppy off the top lane. Wait, Because if, if they remove the Chilling Touch from that lane, it doesn't work. Um, I'm really not sure. I think Paladise is coming down here to check the rune, and now he's going to see Puppy and go, <laughs> yeah, no. Nabi's uh, playing an aggressive trial with a Spectre. Like, I feel like this wait, is what? more about mind games than Dota. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, no, I, wait. I suppose what? If, if, if you're running a gyro on oh, the Oh, they're trying to first blood mid. If, if you're running a gyro on the off lane, then you do need a range here to go up. If you put Spectre on that lane, he's dead. Or not dead, but in a lot of trouble. and going to get very little farm. So yeah, the lanes work. And Kuro, as he goes Shackles at level 1, there's Chilling Touch up for range and Apparition, which means Shackles won't be enough for Kuro when... Envy is being very, very defensive until he hits level 2. And now you're actually getting Funic zoned out by Aoi. Because he also knows if he gets frostbitten up and a full rocket barrage goes off like that, and then whoosh, actually his flat cannon. Wait, no, that's not. That's just base damage. Wow, I, you, I kind of underestimate the life points that's on Funic. He only has 2 armor and 500 health, so yeah. he's going to die really quickly. And Frostbite, of course, dealing those 140 damage on level 1 is really... It's a scary level he's, one. He's already had to this use... laning is so next level. I don't even know if it's previous level. Like... Oh, okay. Do, 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 you want, do you want an indication that they've actually sentry ward blocked up your ancients? Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering what both teams were expecting here. Because when Navi see it's a support tinker, I feel like then you can safe lane farm your Spectre, right? But they might have thought that C9 was just playing them and we're going to put different lanes than what they actually did. So now, once again, we have one of these games where it seems like both teams are trying to out -mind game each other, and you can't really say who got the better deal of it, because I feel like both of them are just ending up in some sort of weird situation here. So it's going to come down to rotation. You you're playing Spectre AA offlane, for God's sake. What yes. is this? It's, it's a terrible lane. It's definitely a new one to add to the mix, and now what? It's, it's Spectre... It's, I don't think it's anyone, when they tinker. woke up this morning, said that we get a support tinker on the lane with laser and march the machines, with Bone 7 going safe lane park up against a Spectre AA off lane, giving Spectre what? The ability to last? It's like giving him a quelling blade up on this top lane just by having Puppy here, because it gives nothing else. It really doesn't give anything else. This is a really good quelling blade, though. It's, yeah, no deny it's there. Aoi 2000, like he's in trouble on the bottom lane. The arrow's connected, but Sing Sing turns on the Rocket Barrage with the first blood. It does go the way of Na'Vi, but they've given away every bit of life point on Funic, and there's no salve on this bottom lane. That career's going to fly something out to him now, but he's got actually 830 gold, so I'm pretty sure he can afford it. Yep, there comes the bottle. It's going to take a while. Of course, it's a ground courier only. They can't raid it yet. Pylite <laughs> Dai is pushing the top lane with March of the Machines. I don't know. I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> Some... I feel like I'm watching an all random game. Something feels very, very wrong. Wait, this this, 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 this could be like your um like your captain's draft competition. No, oh, this wouldn't even happen there. <laughs> <laughs> because they light up with the support heroes, they can't still give you normal no, lanes. Wait. You want to put lanes like this? This is crazy, man. Uh, I really hope you know. I, I hope this works for C9 in terms of this lane because I just seven. I want to see it succeed. But like this top lane is so weird in every way. Um, but Navi are getting okay farm. I feel Havos does nine CS. The puck has eight, so it's pretty even in that regard. That's Dendi, Dendi is the big player here. On the on the storm, if he gets a good start, we talked about it before the game even began. He's gonna go out of control, yeah. And he's winning mid, only, pretty heavily. Only for it's... now though, because you know what happens when uh, when Envy hits like he's already level level four, which means he's got his mirror images and Riptide with bottle charges to go. So he'll try and zone Dendi out this middle lane. You can't zone out a storm with Naga. Mm. One remnant will kill the illusions. Yeah, that's true. I think it's it's one of the better heroes to have against Naga in mid. So what Envy's going to do is he's going to try to get farm without using his hero because using a melee hero against Storm on the lane it's is his, really difficult. It's his rune control now. Yeah. That's, that's one way to do it. Pylai Dai is just standing on top here. <laughs> I almost laugh every time I see this Tinker. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. It, I, I want to see it work because no I have no idea what's going on. I because it's, it's not even a jungle tinker. Like, the, the jungle tinker, you would instantly say, oh, he's just going to stake up the camps and farm all three of them. But the camp which Kuro blocked up with the Observer Ward, which is this one right here, is like the key camp. Because you, you stack these guys up, and then the Marsh Machines will hit both. But then they've put down another ward on the pull point, so they can't do that either. So it just turns into this, like, well, you're going to chilling touch, so I'm going to give you a 100% missed chance with a laser. It's kind of like what it feels that like the logic is behind this tinker. But I really do not think that was what they picked it for. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure the same thing, but this oh, kind of like this, it's the only logic I could understand at this point. Yeah, he's, he's stacking on mud golems. Yeah, so the thing is, he can't really go many, uh, to many other places. The problem is Navi's actually seeing this. So if they want to try, they can counterplay this stack uh, or try to somewhat steal it or maybe kill the Tinker when he goes and farms it. Dendi's going to be level 6. I think that's the setup here. They're letting Pilot Eye stack, and Dendi will go and get the kill and try to steal it. If they pull that off, you know, Tinker's just out of the game. That's going to be a very long jump in, though. Like, Dendi, Dendi's going to be spotted the instant he's going to disappear. And then you could just have Aoi sit behind him. And you could actually almost set the bait up by C9's point of view. Like, if Dendi is really going to try and contest that stack, uh, then all it's going to take is just one Frostbite. And maybe, maybe Naga's already harassed him down before he jumps up. But if he jumps into March of the Machines, he's in trouble. Because that's going to be a lot of life points going from a Storm Spirit. Manner or not, he doesn't have life points. Yeah. I mean, it's true, but it's only going to be one march. Uh, Pyro Arrow. obviously doesn't have rearm. <laughs> Flies astray. Meanwhile, up on top lane, three heroes. There's your rotation in from Dendi. He's coming in for Bone 7. Dragon back in for the Cold Feet. The second kill will come with the Martian Machines. It's causing trouble for both Dendi as well as Puppy. And now Pylite Eye goes into Core Roll. <laughs> While on bottom lane, Sing Sing, Shackle, but look at the full Rock of Barrage with a Flag Cannon. He might even get the kill though, but the Starfall from Funic with the DD rune behind him too. Without that DD rune, I'm pretty sure Kuro was dead then, but either way, Sing Sing was toast. This game is just falling apart already for, uh, for C9. They're 2,000 gold behind at 6 minutes and 1,500 XP, and it's, it's because... It's better than we thought it was going to be though. That <laughs> now, I was expecting some completely different laning here, which is why I... I'm not sure what C9's plan is here to recover from this, but unless Pilot Eye starts getting some serious farm in that jungle, I'm not seeing them putting pressure on Navi. That's the problem. The, the Puck is not getting that much. He went to the bottom lane now, so that Blink Dagger is not coming up. Dendi got the assist up top. He is definitely on top of the farm charts here. He's 10 CS ahead of the mid Naga, who can't even come in close. Mm -hmm. And there's just no response. How are they ever going to gank Dendi with the heroes they have? He, he can play like he wants in this mid lane. With Bone 7 so crippled, I'm with you, man. Like, yeah, Dendi has a license to kill. He's like double O's, double O Dendi. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm wondering now if you're C9, what's the game plan? Because you don't make a strategy so that <laughs> Na you're Navi's lost. game plan starting now, man. Moonlight Shadow, bring him in, and Envy, top, pop that ulti. Pop that ulti. It's the only thing that will save him right now, and he cannot get it off in time. Spectre gets the kill. Ow is too far away, so he had the Desolate effect on him too. That's three points up in Desolate, and Dendi doesn't even need a Vorse to help him. Jumps three times, brings down the Crystal Maiden. 
And Navi now 5-0 and about to be bigger. Funic arrow follow-up, bone seven on the bottom lane with the with Ether Shock and the Starfall from Mirana. Phase Boost was already giving giving him the bonus damage there. And we're seven uh, seven eight minutes in with C9 being 6-0 down. At the same time, I remember another game being very, very similar to that. The difference was that the 6-0 was not a 3,500 gold lead at 8 minutes, and the drafts were very, very different. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to imagine, I'm thinking, okay, if I'm C9 now, I obviously can't stay in this situation. You have to do something, right? Mm -hmm. So, since Tenka can't do anything in a gank, he's actually level 6 now, which is great, and he, is, he doesn't have a soul ring yet, though. That's a big problem, but uh, he could maybe start jungling slowly now. Um... He's got, he's so what do you do? You have a CM to gank. I, I feel like the whole the whole game is on bone seven right now. Get level six and start getting some ganks. No one else is going to do it. And mm -hmm. if they just sit back, they're going to get out farmed and they're going to get out ganked. And you just see it already. Dendi with the haste rune smoked with puppy and funic. Yeah. They, they they realize it like you said. Like they get they get ganked up because C9 do want to stall it up. They want to have Sing Sing with really, really high levels up in his early DPS, because then they can do their combination. Then they can look for a gank. Right now, it's just going to be Aoi's death. This poor support is going to be the third time Crystal Maiden dies in this game already, while on bottom lane, we're going again. This time, though, Kura can't reach Bone 7. And Bone 7 also has the Dream Call up his sleeve. So it's going to be very difficult to kill him off anyway. But a Vorse getting big. Vanguard nine minutes in. Doesn't need to rush up Radiance in this game because he knows like Diffusal is going to cause even more troubles in this game than anything else. I think we're going to see a counterplay from C9 down here in bottom. So Bone is constantly hanging in the right on the edge of where he's going to get hexed. Storm middle lane jumping on Envy. He sees the courier as well, but Havorst haunts himself in. Storm Spirit will get the kill, but Havorst, he actually did come into the middle lane. He realityed into the middle lane. But he watched Owie also come down the bottom lane. Owie, he thought he could have some life points down here, but he's down at 360 without even entering the wave. And Puppy's also hit level 6 too. So AA's got his old D up and running before 10 minutes in. Now Funic throws the arrow. Uh, unfortunately for him, he doesn't actually... Well, he does see him properly, but that AA ulti with Starfall. There is no hope for that Tinker at all. Things, yeah, th things have gone wrong. Things have gone horribly, horribly wrong for C9. What I'm trying to to imagine is what would have what should have gone right with how they chose to do it. So I'm assuming that Pylai die with the laning that they did in the start was supposed to go into the jungle way earlier than he did, but he couldn't afford to do it. Mm -hmm. Now this has just won every lane massively and um, if you look at the support levels in particular, that's what I want to point out now. Kuroki is level seven and Puppy's level six, Crystal Maiden's level three. And the Tinker's level six, but he's not a support anyway. So they don't have the means of ganking. They don't have the means of fighting. Oh, wait, what is this? They're going to try now. Yep, they're going to come in. This is going to be called down everything else they got. First march to the machines. He can't get a... Actually, he can't get a secondary one off, so a Vorse will lose his life right now. All damage and Dream Coil. They just committed so much to get one hero kill, and they can't even mop up the rest of the mass serpent was that we're here. They at least do kill off a Vorse, but they get the cowies hiding in the trees where it's safe. It's what they have, you know, they have to do it this way because I'm not, I'm not seeing alternatives to pulling off the ganks than outnumbering. Yep. So whenever they get a chance to outnumber, they have to do it. Now Tinker needs time. So they need to find a way of pi to get Pylite Eye up to his boot of travel. He's at least got Soul Ring, so he's got something to play around with. If, actually, he can still force us out. I'm, I'm not, there's no way I'm going to count out C9, no matter how big Na'Vi really get, because at the end of the day, Okay, no, split push power doesn't really work for him, but I know that this lineup can turtle like an absolute... M okay, goodbye, Sing Sing. Uh, it can turtle when they're inside their base, not when they're on top of their tier 1 towers. But with, like, call down, march machines, Naga's sleep, they get a lot to play with when Na'Vi come high ground. Until that point, though, it's easy pickings. Owie, Frostbite, Funic, Quick Star Fall, misses the arrow on Owie, and now Paladai, Laser, Rockets, Makuro, one more hit. Funny because I have to get the kill on Crystal Maiden. Oh, Kuro! He knew he couldn't reach him, so he throws down the Mass Serpent Ward so he can reach the Tinker. Schmarts. Schmarts. Well, Eternal Envy got two of the wards. <laughs> that he got 60 gold. <laughs> wow, you, 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 you really have become like Mr. Optimistic as, as far as trades go. Yeah, this... You know, when, that, when there's this little optimism to find, then you've got to be optimistic about what you can. There's... 
this is just a rough game for C9. And I feel like strategically it's, you know, I, I don't know how else they should have played with the strategy they made and the lanes they put. I felt like they've just kind of really Locked doomed themselves, themselves into here. a corner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I'm surprised with that because it seems, I feel like C9 generally knows what they're doing in terms of strategy and they rarely lose a game this hard early on and they generally play a good mid game with, with team fights and stuff, but... They're about to lose tier 1 tower on top, but they're going to try and kill lane. off a Vos. Dream Coils there and Bone 7 needs a skill. Frostbite will cancel the TP out. They didn't give it to him, but he's basically got 2k gold. So Bone 7's got almost his blink dagger from this. Tinker took the kill, which is probably just as good because he's about to farm up a triple stack of Ancients. This is getting his BTs. Not fully, obviously, but he's getting a lot closer to having these BTs up and running. And there's his second wave of Martian Machines. And Sing Sing's trying to steal a little bit of it as well. Well, they are buying time. Eternal Envy is now 800 away from the Relic. I mean, it's it's still possible. Right? It's, it is possible, but they... Can the, the turtle be that is, strong? I don't think the turtle can be that strong. They kind of need to avoid losing towers. If if C9 can successfully hold their towers in the next 10 minutes, then mm -hmm. then I'll give them a chance here. But if they start losing the tier 1s to the Master Serpent Watch, which are off cooldown right now, and maybe a gank on Eternal Envy here with an arrow, if he dies, the tower falls. And if that happens two or three times, so to me, the game is completely over. Jump. Arrows on the way in, and Envy, well, he tried to get the Song of the Siren off in time, but he would have been dead if he tried it, because Poppy's ulti would have killed him. No, there was no way he was surviving that. They've lost their T1 tower in mid. Question, Kuro doesn't even need to use the wards for this. So they could just go straight bottom. Now, here, here is C9's one chance. That item right there. Blink dagger. The only possible way I can imagine them coming back in this game is if Bone 7 plays flawlessly, and they set it up yeah, beautifully you, as a team. Your flawlessly is like a five-man coil. It's like flawlessly. Five-man coil into five-man coil down into Naga's sleep to buy him a little bit more time to get a secondary flat cannon off. Now, that TP is coming towards the front lines, and Envy's already got the ulti on. Now, Pilot Eye, he can set double March Machines off, but they've already turned off the ultimate. And then Spectre Horn, Danny, right on top of Bowie. Sing Sing, he's trying to hit, but they all got hit by the AA ulti. The Dream Coil was there, but they only got Storm for it. Puppy will take a double kill. Bone Seven, the sole survivor of Cloud Nine. And the Tier 2 tower is still going to go down. The Vorse turns around for it. And, uh, well, okay, they're battling back to regeneration, so it's not, not as easy. But this tower will still go down. That was not the flawless fight you were searching for, Sind. No. If, if they get that initiation like that and they still get turned around on and, and killed like that, this is... I don't know. Mr. Optimistic is having a hard time living up to his name right now. Oh, silent stream call something! <laughs> Bone 7 almost caught up to Shadow Shaman, and that could have been a decent timing considering uh, Kuro uh, just had the money to buy his Blink Dagger. Uh, but he gets back to base and then still buys it anyway. And Try to have a look at the net worth. I, I prefer not to. I can see the top three. Hey, ulti! Look at the hit! Na'Vi just combo and Dendi! Kuro in a boot doesn't have the mana for it. They threw the arrow out to get some vision, but this bottle is away. Who knows, maybe there's away. a bug and it hits. <laughs> <laughs> Gets the arrow, has no effect. <laughs> oh dear. Oh man, but 19-3. Okay, I know we've had some rather games go one way consistently throughout most of our matches this evening, but I'm pretty sure this is like as one-sided as we've gotten for a very, very long time. <laughs> And yeah, Naga. I think dead. Oh, is he? Where is he? Middle lane, Orchid. The funny thing is, though, he's not that far out. <laughs> he's really not that far out. And I think they're thinking about going in again on Bone 7, but on bottom lane, Funnick's gonna go down. Oh, no, he's not. Rearm takes too long. And he was able to bottle up. There was no rockets. There was no nothing. Look at Pilot Eye. He's in a full defensive build right now. It's three points, Rockets, four points, March. That's what lets you hold your high ground. Funny, it's gonna be careful though. He's low on life, and you're seeing, yeah. Uh, uh, no, 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 bone seven. No, 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 no. He's gonna have to try something like that. I mean, this. You know what? They fucking lost, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can't say that, Sin. You can't say that kind of stuff. You know when you know you've lost when Havos Spectre is getting a mech. That's when the game is over. <laughs> what is...
<laughs> he has a Mac and 20 gold. You know the hilarious thing is, and probably the reason why he's doing that, is because they still realize that pushing high ground is the hardest thing they have to do. So they need yeah. mech and pipe up and running. But It's true. I, it's I, always I, a good item to have. But, I, you know, if, if Navi weren't winning this game that hard, I still don't think he would build this. Has, but now has it's just Spectre for the sake, of, it, for the sake of ending the game. I don't think Spectre's it's, ever built a mech. Playing against the heroes of C9, mech is the best item in the game, so it makes a lot of sense to get it. I wouldn't have thought Havost would get it. You could let Puppy get it, for God's sake. He would have had it on the on the AA by now, almost. Mm -hmm. But they're getting it on the spec, which is perfectly fine. It's going to allow them to reach high ground. And yeah, Nahas, is this the first mech ever? Unfortunately, <laughs> Nahas had computer trouble, so we couldn't connect back in again. Oh, okay. So we don't have our stats, man, for our last game tonight. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen it, at least. So Maybe once. Something which I want to say is more critical right now is Tinker being able to stack up these engines one more time and get the entire farm himself. These BTs need to be here for Pylai Die. They need to be here. We're 18, 19 minutes in and we don't have BTs on a Tinker. I know he's a support Tinker, but still it's not there. Now, the Tier 1 tower is going to drop on bottom lane. At least two remaining out of towers. In the meantime, up on top lane, Sing Sing is considering pushing out the top. Naga is, uh, well, she wouldn't mind the top tower, but she just picked up Relic. Not on her. She has the money for it. I don't know if she gets safe to go through near to any secret shop for herself right now, which could also be a bit of a problem. Because uh, the second she picks it up, she could die straight after, and then Navi go high ground and win. But, like, okay, life is hard. <laughs> It is really just that simple. Oh, at the very least for C9, since Havost went for a mech, they get some time. <laughs> I, if if they survive the push, then they get a little more time from Havost getting a mech instead of going for Radiance or Diffusal Blade. Oh, arrow! They gotta go a long way, but Denny's happy to do it. And then back out to safety. <laughs> it takes some damage from the tier 2 tower, but I don't think he really cares. He's still got two more bottle charges to expend. And now they get a fortify up for the tower. Well, you know how those BTs were getting close? Inched a little bit further away. But pushing high ground is still a problem. And look what it actually Envy has done. He wants the Radiant straight away. Another arrow's gonna have a fish and it actually hit. Five seconds. Dendy, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? He's uh, back in mid. He's not gonna make that jump. Uh, <laughs> it's searching for the Crystal Maiden. And now we knew it too. Is that a level 2 ulti? No, it's just a level 1. He would have one. survived that anyway, I think. Yeah. But better safe than sorry. If, if it was a level 2 ulti, then it would have been enough. But Koro is just watching Eternal Envy come out here on the bottom lane. And he jumps in. Hex, Ward Trap, Dendi, Orchid. And Relic gets postponed by another 2 minutes. Okay, here's my call. He's not going to get the Radiance this game. See, I'm, I'm going to call... It doesn't count if he sells his bottle. You know, see, now nah, that's just cheating, Sindarin. That doesn't count. That's just cheating, Sind. I, I, th I think you'll reach it. And the only th reason I think you'll reach it is because with Call Out of Marsh from the Sheens, Cloud9 can still stall out the next two minutes. If, if he keeps dying, however, yeah, problematic. Where does he go to get farm? I lanes when it hits the tier 3 tower. But then again, Paradise mopping all that up. And so it was, this really is just a battle. Like, I think Sing Sing just arrived in mid lane saying, you know, piss off with your Martian machines. This farm is mine. I need it's to like finish one my of those, BKB. <laughs> it's like one of those games where in, in a pub game, you just, you've picked way too many carries and all the carries are fighting for the farm while you're losing the game. It's kind of, it feels like one of those games right now for C9 because all of their heroes need so much farm and they can't just prioritize one over the other because it doesn't, it isn't enough that one of them gets it. They all need it. Man, look at the force. I think, you know, I said like, this isn't one of these games where you get Blade Mal on heroes. We just got one over on the Spectre. Awesome against Tinker, of course. Mm -hmm. Which is just going to start reflecting the damage up against a Tinker who's only getting BTs, which means Soul Ring and March on the Sheens. He can't just stay on the front lines. Damn it, Envy's getting close. Like you're gonna lose this 450. one. But then he's again, gonna get ganked. D Dendy's here. Yeah. He's gonna jump in. He's looking for Bone 7. Now, Bone 7 gonna silence off at least, but he's also Orchid, so he'll die. A Vorse jumps in, and now Aoi Aeol's gonna come in, and Envy just says, HOLD THE PHONE! All right, wait a second. Envy just cancelled the cast animation of that three times, so he basically let his teammates die, and then he cast it and TP'd out. Like, it was like he was just messing with them, like they've already given up. That was just weird. That made no sense. That looked like 3 2 2, man. I'm gonna make no comment. Uh, 
I can, I can move on to something else though, which is Na'Vi taking Roshan. This is obviously not hard. Surprising that Puffy's not using his chilling touch for this. <laughs> it's, to, it's like, bring it down a little bit faster. Considering the physical DPS is still very, very low. Like, the Desolate just lets a Vorse dish out so much damage, but, like, the only, ma like, bonus damage he's really getting is from, what, Blade Mail with a bonus 22 damage? Desolate only works on heroes, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I'm talking, I'm sorry, my mind was looking at Roshan, I'm talking, like, Desolate when he attacks other people. Like, the physical DPS isn't there. Yeah, sorry, I, my, my, my brain went to one point, I didn't fill up the rest of it. Envy has Radiance! Your face, Cinderin! Your face! Oh, God. Damn it. <laughs> 25 for 3. That's the smallest I mean, it's not victory. the worst timing either. It's 23 minutes and he's 0-6. Yeah, look what he's doing. It could have been way worse. This, this, is, this is Miracle play. This is exactly what Miracle did. He sends one illusion top. He sends one illu two illusions mid. They rip tied up. And while he's farming up inside the other jungle, because he sent two to tw towards the mid because they had to survive a little bit longer, He's actually stalling up the creep waves, which makes it very difficult for Na'Vi to actually breach the base. And then he farms up the rest of the Radiant Jungle in the meantime. But there are five creeps coming in. Arrow as well. Bone 7! Face shifts. Evades it. But it seems like Denny had other, th other thoughts. Kills off the Tinker. Halt will come out. It's a double kill for Dendi. Moving on to Sing Sing. Triple kill for Dendi. And a Vorst runs around with a Blade Mal inside. Owie, where's your Ultra? There she is! Ultra kill for Denny, but Frostbite! No, it's not! Sorry, it's the hold from Eternal Envy, but Aegis the Immortal go balls in. We need a Rampage right now. Envy's in the base. It's a double kill for Funic. Where's your Rampage? It's not there. Spectre takes the kill. Over again, Rampage for Dendi! And the corpses of C9 will coat the trophy for Na'Vi as they win the D2CL Season 2. GG call is there. Game over, GG. Thanks for watching. We're not wrapping up at that point, by the way. Yes. Oh, send. I would say, do you have any last words as you look at your stat screen? But I'm pretty sure your eyes will be fixated on one thing. 16-1-10. 16-1-10. I predicted this game right. I said I was wrong a lot today. Well, I was right on this one, and I cannot believe what I just saw. Not that it was a stomp like this, because I was expecting this to be one-sided, but that the, it was... I don't... Bleh? Yeah. 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 The first game the that hell? ends before 30 minutes as well. <laughs> right. Like one of those what-the-hell-did-I-just-watch moments. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely I sure. Of, no? I, I think we have to go back to the drawing board and support Tinker. Um... I think we have to go back to the drawing board as far as like thinking Tinker supporting a puck on a safe lane and pushing Jared to the off lane. Like that actually really wasn't the problem at the start. That lane worked for C9 to a point. Uh, the middle lane was just Storm Spirit up against Naga Siren. So there was no kill potential there. It was just meant to be the Radiance Rush, which is probably why Naga led like. I gotta say, decent timing on the Radiance, and I'm doing like inverted commas with my fingers at this point. Uh, but yeah, things didn't gel. I remember when I first started playing Dota, and one of the guys told me, like, out of every lineup you wanna find, it's synergy. Synergy is 100% what you're searching for. And the really sad thing is, I think C9 actually found the synergy to a point, but never executed the synergy, and they were also countered by certain heroes on Na'Vi, so all things went wrong. Either way, I'd almost like to give Eternal Envy a call. <laughs> I, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if he'll actually answer this one. Actually, no, he's offline. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's actually online before, but he's definitely offline now, so we can't give him a call and ask him. But either way, man, I, I would challenge Luminous to sit down and actually analyze this this game <laughs> and tell me what he thinks. Either way, I don't know what happened. No. Let's just let's just wrap it up as that, man. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. Of course, follow my co-caster over at Cinder and Dota with all the awesome stuff he's doing over at Dota Cinema. And of course, uh, you can follow the next season. The D2CL has already begun 
the D2CL, not the main season, we had the qualifiers uh, happen over the last couple of days. So we have our new teams qualified in. Uh, you can follow that coverage over d2cl.org. And of course, uh, join.org will be bringing you your English coverage again for the next season. So hopefully you've enjoyed the matches. VODs will be uploaded to our Daily Motion channel in 48 hours' time. They'll also appear over on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash join Dota. Check out the awesome stuff we're doing over there. And we're having ourselves some great times with some fun shows. Uh, and also, we do have a grand final tomorrow night. We have another grand final tomorrow night. We have uh, Fnatic playing their match the uh, tomorrow night. They start at 4 p.m. That's 16 CET tomorrow evening. They have themselves a best of five up against Team Empire in the MLG TKO grand final. And uh, there's more action after that too with uh, more stuff coming out from the ESL 1 qualifiers. They've also begun. We're covering that one over on our Twitch channel. Between those three competitions, we jump across three different platforms. So definitely watch joiner.com to see where we're actually moving. For now though, thanks for watching everybody and we'll catch you next time on the live stream.